Hey, what is up guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros, and with the release of the Ryzen 3 lineup, a lot of people have been making content around gaming and just the overall budget build market when it comes to Ryzen 3. But one thing I consider that's kind of important for people who build budget PCs, and especially using the platform that we use, there are a lot of people out there who want to make budget content creation machines, and with Ryzen 3 out, with its four cores and decent clock speed, I I was curious to see if somebody could put together a very affordable editing rig using Ryzen 3 and using Adobe Premiere Pro and possibly an Nvidia card with CUDA acceleration. So in this video we did just that. I took the Ryzen 3 1200, overclocked it to 3.8 GHz and threw in a GTX 1050 Ti for CUDA acceleration. While the 1050 Ti really is not the best card for something like this as far as CUDA acceleration goes, it gives a good example of what you can expect if even if you you wanted to upgrade to something even higher end. So without any further ado, let's just get right into this video and talk about what I made and how well it actually turned out. So we started out with a fresh Windows install, and the main reason I did that was because Premiere Pro was having some sort of issue on my SSD being installed, so I had to wipe it, gut it, and start over again. So this won't be the most real-world scenario of somebody who has a system with a bunch of background tasks, but most editing systems are a little bit cleaned up, and somebody who wants to use an editing rig will most likely keep their system a little bit tidier if they want the best performance, or they're going to struggle. But in this scenario, we're going to be testing it as best as I possibly can with a fresh Windows install and the Ryzen 3 1200, which again, I did overclock to 3.8 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. If you hit the eye in the top right corner, you can check my review of the Ryzen 3 1200 and 1300X. Very awesome processors from the money, but I always go back to recommending the Ryzen 3 1200 if you are going to go Ryzen 3. So with that all put together, what I did was loaded up Adobe Premiere Pro and took a couple of footage files from my Ryzen 3 PC build and threw it into the timeline. These are 1080p 30fps footage from my Nikon D3300 and I used the full playback resolution when checking and scrubbing through the timeline. When scrubbing through the timeline, even at half resolution and full resolution, there were no hiccups at all. It was a little bit skippy, but it wasn't the worst experience at all and once everything loaded in, all the assets and all the other files that are needed, it was a pretty smooth editing experience. The GPU does help a lot. Having CUDA acceleration in Premiere Pro really helps a lot with the overall fluidity of timeline movement and scrubbing, which a lot of people may think when it comes to video editing, the only thing that's really important is export times. But in reality, editing the actual video and having the horsepower to edit the actual video and throw a bunch of effects on it and do different cuts and different transitions is the most important thing because you could always have a video render while you go do something else. That's really not that important. After testing the one video file, I decided to throw in another video that I used in a time lapse format, which is really demanding on the CPU when speeding up a video file and then playing it back raw without exporting. And it actually kept up pretty well in comparison to my 1800X system that I did test this with when I had my 1800X for review. And that is pretty impressive. One, I don't accredit this fully to the Ryzen CPU because the CPU was close to pinging at 100%, but having that GPU, even a 1050 Ti, and it made editing in Premiere Pro very simple. I really didn't skip a beat at all when it comes to my timeline production, and I could really see this working very well for some of my high production quality videos. Now keep in mind, for this test bench, I did use 16 gigabytes of RAM because if you're editing video, 16 is really the minimum that you should go with, even with something like a Ryzen 3 setup. I really recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM because it gives you the best flexibility and it's almost the bare minimum when it comes to getting good performance in Premiere Pro. Eight gigabytes really just doesn't cut it with video editing anymore. You may be able to do it with some older editing softwares like Sony Vegas, but if you're going anywhere near Premiere Pro, 16 is really the way to go. So now on to the rendering times, which is something I know a lot of you are very interested in. And what I did was take that one long clip of me talking about the PC build, throw it into the Premiere Pro, add some effects to it, and then exported it as H.264 with a 25 one pass variable bit rate. And then I decided to export it. And that eight minute video took roughly 11 minutes to export out, which is very, very acceptable. While this is a pretty basic case of just a normal cut and clip edit to where there's not many crazy transitions 
transitions or anything like that. Normally, that's the basis of most people who are getting into content creation, and that's all the things you have to do as far as editing goes. So in reality, Ryzen 3 is still a viable option for someone who wants to get into some entry-level editing and wants to have a basic gaming rig to do some gaming videos and maybe then transition to editing those videos. But if you do want to get into something a little bit more high-end and maybe do some 4K video, I would recommend checking out the Ryzen 5 lineup with like the 1600X and get those 6 cores, 12 threads, or maybe step it up to the 1700, 1700X and try to get the best possible results you can because this setup will not work very well at all for 4K video. Mainly it will work for 1080p files or things that you downgrade to 1080p and you should be able to edit with flying colors in this software and it really does make it a really awesome budget editing setup. And that about wraps things up here, guys. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you haven't already, follow us on Twitter for more content from the Tootsie Bros and join our Discord community as well. We talk about tech all the time and we're always there to answer your questions. Hope to see you on the next one, guys. Peace out.